looking forward to the end. We got to keep up more of this to go forward, and so it's kind of been the mantra this whole off season. And, uh, just little things, you know. When everyone thinks the weight room session's done, Wiley blows it up and they do extra stuff. Uh, just to get in that mentality that you never expect it to be finished when it's done. Like always think another rep, another rep, another rep. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a great thing moving forward. And, and you know, I think it's it's something that can really help us this season. What's the biggest change for you moving center full time? Yeah, I mean, in spring ball is definitely my footwork and snapping at the same time. Uh, and then just communication. Uh, it's a little easier at guard to get away with just saying one word at a time, you know, for your job. Center, you gotta, you guys don't know what they're doing, you gotta make sure you're over -communic communicative and like telling them where to go if they need help. Um, you can't just rely on just like tell who you're on the belt team with, right? You gotta know everyone's job. So just that aspect, you know, kind of getting back into the language and footwork. Um, but what we've done so far, I'm confident in my play. And then these are big dudes now next to me. Um, Jared and E-Man, Gino, Jonah, all of them. We've beefed up quite a bit this offseason, uh, off so excited to be easy, you know, to get those double teams going. I'm excited for it. Is the communication piece, like, come natural to you? Is it something you kind of felt like you had to progress over time and get more comfortable with? It's definitely been a little more natural being a center, um, but I got away with a lot more at guard. I didn't have to say as much, so just getting myself in the habit of constantly telling, saying the whole thing out when I walk up. Uh, it wasn't super difficult, but you know, there's a couple times I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't tell them what they got, you know? Uh, so just kind of getting back in that habit of like, making, making the whole call. Looking at you guys, it looks like you're all over. What has led to that versus previous off seasons? What's been different this off season to see the games that some of you guys have had? Yeah, just speaking of Wiley, always everyone talks so highly of him. And hopping on that train because he is EV at what he does. Uh, him and his whole staff, Coach Drew, uh, they program it all off season. Uh, so they know come summer what the next eight weeks are going to be. They have percentages for you on weight, what to do, when to push yourself, when to deload a little bit. And I think just the, having that like scientific edge a little bit to the program is is huge for us in games. Because when we go really hard the next day, uh, they know our bodies are sore and tired, so it gives us a little bit of recovery so then we can go even harder the next time we push heavy weight. Just little things like that, uh, emphasizing recovery, um, and then just making us push weight. Some of these guys can bench the numbers, and uh, the other day, Jerry King said he was like shrugging almost 500 pounds. I was in awe, you know. Uh, it was just cool to see. It's cool to see guys getting strong. Is there a translation that you've noticed on the field, just in yourself? Yeah, uh, there is a difference in weight room and field strength for sure. Uh, I mean, it, it correlates a little bit, but some guys, you know, maybe stiff, stiff in the way. I was, when I started, I, I lifted a lot. I got real stiff, so I kind of had to back it up a little bit. And so I think there's that fine line between the two. It's just always, you know, stretching and, and working on your technique constantly rather than overdoing the lifting. Uh, just stuff like that. Uh, but that's why when they came in, I think that's what's changed the game because they've had all those key pieces of recovery, stretch, lift, technique. So you never overemphasize one and get you diminish in another. Talk about the maturity in their room. A lot of experience in this group, despite bringing over a few new guys to the transfer portal. How much of that is a strength to this group? How much of it what? Is a strength for the group? Yeah. Um, it's awesome getting new perspectives, right? Because Voorhees and Brett and I, uh, we all had the same perspective. We came in together, kind of, and, and we all learn from the same coaches, right? Right. So having these guys come in with different experiences from different coaches, you know, they they add to our, our toolbox a little bit. You know, they give us different pieces of wisdom uh, from other programs and from other coaches. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool experience because with Brett and Voorhees and, and some of those guys, you just kind of you knew they you knew and they knew the same exact things. So. Is that kind of 
so like Michael talked when he would be similar to an Andrew Voorhees, married, mature, you know, no outside distractions. It's, it's football school and go home and take care of the wife. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, no, I mean, you know, he's married. He comes and hangs out with us. Uh, all these guys, uh, there's three married guys in the room now. Oh, well, really? Uh, so, you know, it's kind of a new, uh, not a new thing, but it's something that's kind of normal to us now. And it's, uh, it's fun, you know, just have the wives come out, hang out with us. Uh, just little stuff like that, trying to include everyone. And, uh, but yeah, they, we get our work in and then obviously they go home, but I wouldn't say it affects anything, you know, it, it, it uh, just makes us appreciate more of the time together. You know, so. But it just seems like you guys are more more grounded. Uh, and you play in a big city, but you know, like your off season, you're out there, you know, going back to the old high school, pulling trucks, having, you know, doing youth day camps. Where is that coming from? Is that is the coaching staff kind of having that trickle down effect on you guys? Uh, it's definitely easier being older. Okay. Uh, not to say I I don't want to change any of my routines for past years. I just kind of know what to expect know when I have availability and so now I'm really able to give back with my free time and I just kind of be there go out and, and be there for people when they need me and stuff and uh, it's kind of one thing I wanted to focus on this year is just trying to give back a little more than I have previously and, uh, just kind of a personal goal of mine so coach I was asked to pack 12 media day if there's any type of melancholy feeling about you know just being the last year in the pack 12 has that kind of hit you yet that this is your last year at USC? Yeah, uh, last year and, and last time, last SC team to be in the Pac-12, it's kind of a cool feeling in a sense, you know. Go down in history a little bit um, as, as the last uh, USC Pac-12 team. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bittersweet feeling being my last season, you know. Definitely going to miss this program, these people. Just this atmosphere. I'm also excited, you know, to to see what I can do uh, in the future. So. And then 6 a.m. practices or afternoon practices. Which which do you prefer? Which my preference. Yeah. I want to say 8 a.m. <laughs> I want to go like 8 a.m. practices. 6 a.m. is too much. <laughs> You've been around Caleb for a year plus now. What's your sense of how he's grown or changed in that year? Yeah, he, uh, he's a natural leader for sure when he first came in. Uh, naturally gifted, talented on the field. I think he's now just developed it into a professional kind of, uh, his, his talent is now very, he's a pro in everything he does. Uh, everything was kind of natural, raw a little bit when he first came in. And I think now he's just, he's a pro in everything he does. Uh, I've seen him grow so, grow so much. And it's been cool to watch. Everyone thinks he's Superman, you know, but he's still human. And uh, he's just, man, he's an all-around good dude. And playing with him uh, has been one of the coolest college experiences. He doesn't seem phased by draft projections, the Patrick Mahomes comparisons that are starting to come out. How do you view it when people compare him to the greatest living quarterback? It's Caleb. <laughs> in the game. I, I don't think. He, when people compare, I don't, I don't know, I don't like all that. It's Caleb. Caleb's going to be his own person, you know. People are going to compare other kids to Caleb one day. Um, he's a unique talent, a unique person. Not unique in a bad way, you know. I'm, I mean, super gifted. Um, and yeah, he's not phased one bit. He wants more. It's funny, you know. He achieved the greatest award you can. Heisman, he wants more. So that's something not a lot of people can do. You said, you said people think he's kind of superman. Yeah. What are some of the ways in which he kind of displays that human side of him that you've seen? Uh, you know, it's like he's just always willing to come hang out with the O-line, uh, take take us out for dinners or whatever, take us to go paintball and just stuff like that. You know, he's not, he's not like going, doing all these events, thinking, you know, better than everyone type thing. I got to do superhero stuff. He, he wants to hang out with us, be a part of the team. And, that's just something you gotta respect. Is anybody helping him with his pitching? Dude, that was terrible. <laughs> that was a terrible pitch. I laughed right at him. I was like, dude, you gotta work on that. But no, it was awesome. 
that was, I totally even forgot about that. Yeah, it took us to the Dodgers on the field. Unreal experience, man. Coach Henson just, just said that you guys, among the things you guys have done together was time with the batting cages. I'm yes. just curious as to what the batting order would be in terms of hitters on the offensive line. Elijah Page is last, dead last. <laughs> His technique was awful. I have videos of it. I can't expose him. Uh, Jonah Monheim, Jarrett, they can hit it now. They play baseball for a little bit. Uh, I think Killian was pretty good too, Killian O'Connor. It's interesting, I want to see E-Man. I think he could hit that thing. Or, Big dude. Yeah, he, he would barely have to make contact with it. Um, besides that, I got I got to go look back. Mason Murphy was surprisingly good. He was hitting it. Um, a lot of guys love that day. It was funny. We just kind of did it in January, February. Just kind of uh, improvised, and everyone showed up, and we stayed there for like two hours. And we went and hit in and out after, so it was a pretty successful night. You What's been here against a lot of the new defensive line bases in the spring, and I'm sure during the summer. Just what's your sense of where the improvement is on the other side of the ball up front? Yeah, they've, uh, they've definitely recruited a lot of talent. Guys are a lot. They're, they're big, strong. You know, they're they're all around studs. Um, and most importantly, you know, they all they all feel like they have something to prove on that side of the ball. Uh, and this whole team feels like they have something to uh, prove to everyone. So it's just kind of we just kind of feed off each other, you know. And I think both sides of the ball make each other better. You know, I feel like we have an elite O line, elite D line. And it's just it's just shaping us to be uh, pretty pretty good players. What have you seen from Emmanuel so far? E man, strong, really strong. Uh, technically pretty sound, you know. Uh, I've been through it having different line coaches. You know, every coach uh, has a different technique, and he's picked it up pretty quickly, um, which is an awesome thing to see. Getting some guys it's tough, some guys it's not. Uh, he's a pretty fast learner, coachable, asks great questions. Uh, so, yeah, super excited. What's the biggest area you've had to help him with for the adjustment? Um, I think, you know, he came from a smaller program, the USC, so just there's a lot of spotlight here. A lot of just it's different experience, you know, you can ask him. Uh, so, just kind of helping him understand, like, tell him what the USC experience has been for me and then trying to help him. Yeah, through that process. Have you noticed any differences with Lincoln Riley in year two compared to year one? Yeah, um, I think it's just one of those things you, you build off of year one. Um, year one, you know, we hit rock bottom before, so it's easy to build up. And now it's one of those things, it's like, it's no longer rock bottom, you know, we have a new standard to, to beat, basically. So that's just kind of been the mentality of this team is to go beat that standard we set last year. Have you, have you and the other players on the team taken upon yourselves to make sure there there aren't so many demerits given out, so to speak? Um, make sure everyone's on time after workouts. Yeah, it's just, that's just kind of the culture um, of the team. You know, stuff happens in life, so you can't be you can't over scrutinize on anything. You know, mistakes happen in every, in every field. But it's just trying to minimize uh, the intentional mistakes versus unintentional. And I think we've done a great job this season, uh, off-season doing that. Similar question with Caleb. Is there anything you see different in him entering year two versus last year as you all were going through? Yeah, he's just, he's, he's, he's even more hungry, you know. You wouldn't think that when in the Heisman. Uh, but he's even more hungry this year. Uh, he, he wants more and he feels like there's more out there. Uh, man, he's just grown as a leader this year. And super excited to see how he plays. You mentioned to me that he's getting on guys a little more even this year. Have you seen him be more assertive in that way as a leader? Yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely grown as a leader, a little more vocal. Not that he wasn't vocal last year, but I think he's learned where, uh, as a leader, you kind of learn what you're good and not good at. And so I think he's found out his, his leading style. And so, yeah, just kind of being more vocal and not being afraid to call guys out. He's definitely not been afraid to do that. I just, that's a key piece to an elite team, you know, having a player-led team versus a coach-led team.
Speaking of Caleb, uh, I saw he, t- he was at Dodgers today when he was throwing like first pitch and he followed his offensive line with him. What was that like doing with him for that? Uh, that was an awesome experience, you know. I, he just told us to show up. We didn't know we were doing all that going on the field. Um, well, at least I didn't. Maybe they did. I thought I was just going to go push a beer and maybe a hot dog <laughs> watch a baseball game. And then I ended up getting a jersey and, and going out on the field. So it was a, uh unreal experience. I'm super grateful for that. You know, He's taken us some pretty cool places, and I'll never be able to repay him. So it's just awesome. How do you compare the O-line at this point to what you guys had last year? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely – Point of emphasis, like going into those guys, we're, we're a tight group, you know, uh, from day one here. We've been through a lot together, so got a lot of new guys and coming freshman transfers. So, point of emphasis was to try and build camaraderie over summer um, and just, you know, trying to learn about each other. So, come season, you know, we want to play for each other. And I think we achieved that this offseason. Uh, guys got a lot stronger, we got a lot tighter as a unit. I think it's just a well-rounded team, you know. You got great young guys pushing competition up. You got old guys trying to, you know, get better, better. Even the young guys, you know. But it's cool to have that that level of young guys and other people pushing the standard for the whole room. So. Are we done? Are you still still in?